Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Energy up? Doing good? All right, so I'm going to talk uh, about my story, my journey into LinkedIn, how I leveraged LinkedIn, my discovery and my path. Hopefully, you find some lessons that you can take away and apply to your own work life. And if there's something that I'm missing, I'm always welcoming feedback as well. So it's a sharing opportunity. I'll share my story. And at some point in time, if you feel like sharing yours with me, I'm willing to listen and engage. So what will you learn today, hopefully? Um, I'm going to share with you how I have learned to leverage LinkedIn, what surprises did I have in terms of our own data set, and things that I used to navigate the talent space for LinkedIn. Um, because it was a wealth of information, and I wanted to understand the product and the opportunity and what we were developing. I wanted to overcome common myths that still existed within my own company about where we're losing talent from and to. And so if you're running after the wrong rabbit, you will have bad behavior. You'll have the wrong compensation structure. You'll have the wrong recruiting brand opportunities. So I wanted to make sure I leveraged what is our reality, using data to discover the as is, using LinkedIn profile data also to show me where people are going to, um, why perhaps they were leaving. Uh, changing industries, career growth, et cetera, et cetera. So I just had this great opportunity to dive into LinkedIn. I've been at LinkedIn now a little over a year and a half. Uh, this is my third stint as head of HR and probably the most engaging role I've ever had in my career. This is the only repeat industry I've ever done. I've purposely done uh, entertainment with Viacom, Calvin Klein Cosmetics, Merck Pharmaceutical, Applied Materials and Semiconductor, a med device, you name it. I did Yahoo, I'm doing a repeat because I met Jeff at Yahoo and now I'm at LinkedIn. So, and it's a, been a great ride. So, um, HR world has changed dramatically. We do have a lot more data at our disposal. Some companies have a lot more depth in data analytics than others, but doesn't mean that data is not there in human capital tools that you have in Glassdoor, as you heard earlier, in LinkedIn. There's ways to mine the data at a very reasonable cost and sometimes free, right? Just open your eyes. And so I wanted to open my eyes and figure out what is LinkedIn, what is our talent brand, how are we showing up, and discover my truth. So the first 60, 90 days doing assessment, the next nine months evaluating where my opportunities were, and I'll share my story. All right, so what did I learn? Huge, amazing growth. I mean, the amount of people we were hiring year over year was astounding. Uh, numbers I, I've never done before in my career. And so that, that was like a <gasps> moment in time, how we were hiring all these people, 2,000, 3,000 employees. Our turnover was relatively low. On average right now, we're about 12%, 11, 12% turnover. For the tech side, we're about 8.5%, 9%, very, very strong on the tech side. So who we hire, we are retaining. Our engagement's really high. We do our employee survey twice a year. Why? Because our growth rate is so high. The volume of people that we're recruiting, if I lose sight of where my culture is going and the engagement of my employees, that's a huge miss, right? The volume was so great, I wanted to keep a pulse on it. If I was steady in growth, I probably would only do the survey once a year. So right now, twice a year seems relevant for me and company and keeping an eye on the ball. And so our engagement was in the top five percentile of the world. We use Sirota. Um, we look at all the typical things you guys were, you do all the time. And it gives me a gauge in how well we are attracting the right talent, uh, the right management, where's my heat map of opportunity. And I take that information, I read the data, and I create plans. Um, also looked at our talent pipeline, looked at LinkedIn on LinkedIn data. Who are we losing talent to? When they left LinkedIn for their next play, where'd they go? Did they go for a lateral move? Did they go for a career shift? Did they go for promotion opportunity, a different industry? I wanted to understand if I was losing them to Google, Facebook, Twitter, or to other startups, and what stage startup, right? So how do I compete? What kind of compensation motivates these individuals? Um, and how to assess where my offerings were globally. Right, so I um, early days separated out comp and Ben in my org design. I think benefits are a differentiator. I think they are a powerful, powerful tool in the world to take care of self and others. When I go around the world and I listen to employees and I talk to the different affinity groups, I actually change benefits based upon on what I hear and the opportunity. I want to compete fairly and treat you well, but in some cases I want to differentiate because it's LinkedIn, right? So what do we stand for? So 
key observations, what did I do with it, um, how did I get my arms around it. I am still getting my arms around it. It's a big company with a lot of growth, a lot of challenge. So I'm just riding the ride and, and uh, taking advantage of what I have in front of me. So I leveraged LinkedIn. I treated myself as a customer. I actually hired someone in the sales force to represent LinkedIn. So as I advertised jobs, as I looked at my own data set, as I looked at my brand in the market, as I looked at all those elements, I got a sense of how we were performing. I threw a gauntlet out to the talent acquisition team. We globalized them and I said, I want the NPS scores of our uh, candidate experience to be fabulous whether or not we ended up marrying you or not. Right? That's a big, big challenge. So if we're dating and it's a very personal engagement on recruiting and I decide not to hire you for whatever reason, that's a hard, hard pill to swallow. And so the NPS scores of those people that have been turned down were statistically uh, huge between those that got accepted. Was it because their experience was that much different or is it because I didn't like being rejected? So I was trying to figure out because these are my Uber members. So anyone that interviews at LinkedIn they normally, if they haven't had a profile, they have one right before they walk in the door. Because <laughs> a smart recruiter tells them, get your profile up and uh, make sure you have a photo in it. And, you know, they give them the tips. And so they start learning LinkedIn. And when you interview at LinkedIn or any company, you learn the culture, you learn what the strategy is, you learn the vibe of the energy of the room. And so I went through that experience. I wanted to make sure our candidate experience as we were courting you was wonderful and you came out stronger out of the pipeline, whether or not we hired you, just by going through that experience. Do I know what my personal brand is? Do I know what my skills are? Do I know my marketability? And do I know my career path? That's you know, valuable information for any candidate to have. If I happen to engage with you and create a long-term relationship with you, all the better for it. If I don't engage with you immediately in that long-term relationship, Maybe you come back again, because remember, I'm growing like 50%, so I might come back and tap you again. So I want you to love me, regardless if I end up creating that long-term relationship at that point in time or not. And so there's a challenge out there to make that recruiting experience, that courting experience that's so personal, so wonderful. So I'm using LinkedIn data for me to do that, and I'm looking at other data as well. I'm looking at many surveys as the candidate's interviewing. Did the recruiter uh, show up on time? Do you know where the bathrooms are? Do you know who you're interviewing with? Was the manager on time? Were you treated with respect? Did you feel special? We're looking at different elements of the recruiting process because I want to know how great does that feel and I want to make sure that we're representing LinkedIn in the best way. Uh, so while we globalized TA, I also learned that our talent brand differed across the globe. That's okay at a local nuance. It's not okay when it feels like a different company. So if I'm recruiting out of Singapore or India or Dubai or Dublin or Chicago, New York, et cetera, I want to make sure that it feels like one company, that you understand the brand or employee, employer promise from the company, and it feels right, and we commit to that promise, and it's delivered in any location. Now, there's a 20, 30 percent localization I expect because I want it to feel like you belong there, it's your culture, it fits the local needs, so I want a sense of local pride, but I don't want to do that in sacrifice of the global company. So we're watching that as well, because I think it's really, really important with the global workforce, I want you to feel like you're still with the same company and not feel like you're in a foreign exchange. Make sense? So I also wanted to look at other data sets. So everyone has a human capital management tool, be it uh, success factors, Workday, Oracle, SAP, doesn't matter. You're all trying to capture the same human capital data to the best of your ability. You're also trying to get to the right center of truth to make sure that the data is clean. I mean, if you don't have clean data, no one's going to pay attention to you. And you want to make sure that you have simplistic tools so managers know how to use it. These are management tools, business tools. They're not HR tools. We happen to be the biggest user of them for the business but they enable the workflow of the employee from hire to retire. And so I look at the human capital tool. I want to marry that with LinkedIn, right, and the data and the profile. Candidates tend to have the better source of truth on their profile than they do if you make them do it in-house. So in my other jobs at Yahoo, at Plantronics, at Align Technology, I tried to get their resume, if you will, updated and relevant so I can do internal mobility. I could not compete with the LinkedIn. And so with Workday that we happen to be on, we now have this integration and it's a great 
integration that can be leveraged. I can see as people update their profiles and skill sets and rotation opportunities. I can do some predictive analysis. Um, how many of you guys have read Reid Hoffman's book, The Alliance? All right, a couple of you. I suggest you do. It's provocative. It talks about the tour of duty of an employee. It talks about the natural evolution of an employee life cycle. So if you come into a new role, you're kind of in you know, four boxes. You have the eager beaver moment where everything is glorious and you're excited and you see opportunities. You're in the role. After a little while, you have this oh shit moment. You know, excuse me. Um, I'm not sure I know how to solve all these problems. And then you have, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it down. And then you have a mastery cycle where you kind of nailed it. You've lived on your own mistakes. You iterated. You improved. And now you feel confident. If you're mastering all elements of your job, you become bored that it takes anywhere from three to five years, depending on the complexity of the role. So if you are aware of that natural life cycle, and certain humans have a faster cycle than others, and you can see that in their profiles, by the way, how often do they change jobs and companies, you can do predictive analysis of turnover. Very simple, right? And you can, make, you can assess that turnover internally. You can look at someone that's been in your technology group. They've been in role 18 months, 24 months. You tap them on the shoulder and say, what's your next play? What would you like to do different? How excited are you? Are you mastering your current job? You know, how can I help you? Not only will you engage that employee further in the company, but they will further develop their own career path and transform their own career direct, uh, trajectory while staying at LinkedIn, or while staying at Saba, or while staying at Trillia, anywhere they want to be. But as long as you know that that's their normal cycle, if you can accommodate it in your company, you're better served. So I was looking at all this great data and looking at what is the tempo of LinkedIn, um, looking at where we're performing in terms of systems, tools, and processes, and then I decided to do an audit. So I looked at the LinkedIn data. I called in PwC, and I said, I want you to assess my, my team and I on 12 different elements to be the best of HR in the world. What would that look like, both in technology and outside of technology? I don't want to be blindsided, because other industries do great things, too. And I wanted to say, how are we with strategy, with people, with operations, with technology, process, compliance, um, engagement? They looked at all these different elements. They interviewed over 100 of my key customers. And they assessed my infrastructure and my team. And they came up with a scorecard, red, yellow, green. The green would indicate the scale and scope of success that I determined was required for LinkedIn. So I created a big audacious goal for my team. And I said, let's imagine in three years' time, I don't want to be a choke point for the growth of LinkedIn. Let's imagine that we can be a $10 billion company, 20,000 plus employees in 70 countries or locations, doing acquisitions with ease, um, going into emerging countries, and having great quality employee experiences. That's what I want. How do we serve that? And so we created our journey map. And so I looked at where we're losing people, and I compared that data. And I said, OK, if I'm losing it to an Intuit, if I'm losing it to a Facebook, what about Facebook? If I'm losing it to Google, why, why Google? And I took some of the best practices of those and applied it within my own organization. This is a report that you can get out of LinkedIn from your own recruiting support. And so this was, again, insight of departures and acquisitions. And then I said, OK, if I'm looking at and impacting the talent base of LinkedIn, um, I always get asked for the unicorn or the purple squirrel. Do you know what this is? So it's really hard to find. But apparently, there is such a thing as a purple squirrel. I didn't know about it. And so I, I knew about the unicorn. Uh, when Jeff Weiner was interviewing me, uh, I asked him about what was he looking for. He said, a unicorn. I said, I'm a really good horse. I don't know about a unicorn. <laughs> And so when I got into the recruiting language, I realized, what is this purple squirrel? And what does it mean to me and LinkedIn and my own organization? And so my team and I were looking at some key, key roles. And we realized they were so specific in the marketplace, they were needle in a haystack. There might have been five people that met that criteria globally. And all five of them were happily engaged somewhere else that I couldn't grab them out of that organization. So what was I going to do? Was the role so specific? That, I, that, that was impossible to obtain in a timely manner, and is that critical to the success of LinkedIn? So we used data to set expectations. And we said, OK, what is it that you're looking for? What's the variability of the skill set, of the experience, the size of the organization? Everyone comes in with bias. 
One reason why I altered all my industries is because I didn't want to be a one-trick pony. I didn't want to be the, the HR leader that only worked in pharma or the person who only worked in entertainment or the person who only did enter, you know, internet. Because humans are humans. I think we can play across all boundaries. And so how do you get an executive to think about that as a needle in a haystack and open up their horizons and find that successful candidate? So I learned how to find a purple squirrel. And so this is what we did and it actually worked. I met with one of our executives for this data uh, center network guru. And at first, the initial search only showed seven people, all highly engaged, all employed. Some of them are outside the United States. Chances of us getting them are very small. Most of them are new to role. It was going to be a hard bet for LinkedIn to grab. Then we removed some of the recommendations that they were looking for. It opened up the network, removed years in position because they were expecting X number of years. We reduced that, made it broader because you have different learning agility curves for different individuals and you can't assume one size fits all. Removed company type to broaden the, the search and removed company size because we think that if people had some variability in there, again, adaptability, your, your pool of candidates get larger. So we went through that process and actually found a fabulous candidate by opening up the kimono a little bit about types, size, location, and engaged the organization, showed them where they were. Because if you're only going after the seven, it will take you longer than a year to fill that position, and that is critical company, and we will fail. So by changing how they looked at recruiting, it changed the operation flow and the ability to hire talent for LinkedIn. So this is the beginning of my journey map. I took all this learning that I had with my team and said, OK, what are our strengths? Um, my organization is called GTO, Global Talent Organization. I'm the head of talent, you know, the head of HR for LinkedIn. They call it talent. And so uh, we had the right strategic intent. Uh, we led by example. We had the right folks behaving the right way, thankfully. Um, we're not overexposed in risk. We're actually pretty smart in our decision-making compliance and um, drive growth today and in the future. So we have some capability to do that in the talent recruiting. But we had some gaps. And so we went through that opportunity assessment, created a scorecard. And if anyone's ever led a high-performing organization, you know anything below 100% or an A score irritates you and you're going to work really hard to get to an A. So that's what my team did. This is a simplistic view of the journey map. We had massive spreadsheets. This is three months of work that we did. Um, after we had the assessment, we created a three-year journey for each function, each vertical, talent management, HRBP, talent acquisition, comp, benefits, operations, systems, dashboard, analytics, you name it, and figured out what does it take to get to that three-year vision of inspiring you to transform the world. And the U was not only my employee base, my team, it was for every customer, every person that touches LinkedIn in our experience, because we touch so many, those that we hire and those that we don't. And we want to make sure that experience was beautiful like the example of the recruiting, the connection, whether or not we hire you for that long-term relationship. I want you to love LinkedIn by having gone through that relationship. So we created these uh, pipelines of activity that are very integrated amongst each other. We looked at the different waves, and we looked at the timeline that which would take to get this stuff done. So we built our platform. We are doing that now. We're iterating on LinkedIn. We're influencing the product, and the team's highly engaged. We build our tour, uh, quarterly dashboard, our yearly plan. We're in the midst of doing the same thing for 2015. And we'll continue with that cadence for the next three years as we achieve our vision. And then we look at our talent to make sure what we've built in terms of learning and development, recruiting, achieve our goals. And so this shows you some of the data that we pulled out in terms of make or buy on our talent. Are we buying the right kind? Are we building? If we're building, are we developing in the right way? And what do we do with that talent? I'm still on our journey. My team and I are still discovering data. I'm trying to look at data that solve business problems, not going fishing. And I'm learning LinkedIn because as you grow at scale, you're going to crack the platform occasionally. And I want to have the agility to look at those mistakes, fix them, iterate again, and move fast. So I'm at the beginning of my journey. Again, feedback is welcome. Thank you for your time. And this is our opportunity to grow. <laughs>